12 greetings. Well, my name is Brian Crawford. Um, I'm an artist by night. Uh, by day, I'm a computer programmer. My name is Kathy Miller. I'm an artist. Hi, my name is Amber Contagna. Judith Lee Perkins. My name is Sergio Garcia. Um, I'm from East Dallas. My name is Frank Campagna. Um, I've been an artist as long as I can remember, which doesn't say much. But my name is Tyson Summers. Well, this project is really huge for me, and it's a big honor to be a part of it. Basically, in a nutshell, they knocked down our tunnel, and when we say they, we all know who it is. <laughs> but our tunnel's gone, and all the artwork's gone with it, buried under the ground. It'll be discovered a thousand years from now, and they'll be worth, well, probably millions, probably millions of dollars. But this is the new entrance to Deep Elm. It's, it's going to be a pretty pretty cool entrance again instead of instead of just abandoned buildings and a dart rail. My father and my grandfather, they were huge influences on me. They were both artists, so I grew up with them painting and building and making all kinds of things. I lived here for a couple of years, um, and then ever since the 80s I've been coming down here just because it's, it is a real artistic community and it's friendly to artists. So if you walk into the pub or the coffee shop and you have paint all over you, they don't treat you poorly. <laughs> Cinder block was very uh, grippy, and then the, the garage door has the bumps in it, so that one was the hardest. figures so that's what I started with and I left everything blank and I waited to see what they were going to do and then I just kind of I took off from what they were doing but did it in my own style like maybe a little plainer or more graphic than what they were doing. Sergio's like spray paint guy, and his he's he makes it look so easy when he's spray painting, but he gets the he gets everything like the shoelace he just did. He was like, tss, 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 and then it just it's spot on. He nails it. I've been painting murals for a while. I started I did the tunnels I guess a long time ago with Frank, and then Frank invited me in to do 
this project with him this time. Me and Frank are real good buddies. I've known Frank for a long time. I've been helping him out with the kettle and you know a lot of projects. Actually I was valeting, you know, when I first met Frank and Frank turned me on to a lot of jobs. And uh, our relationship's been really cool, so anytime you ever need something, I'm there and vice versa. All of our styles are just massively different. We kind of had some form of a theme, but we're so organic. I mean, it is what it is, and I think that's the beauty of it. The idea of graffiti is like, you know, when you, when you see like a mural or a piece of art, it's just, it's something different. It's a break from like, you know, an idea of making money. You know, it's like, it's not like, seeing a billboard with like, you know, buy this or buy this or hey, our shop is here. Like everything you see always is a business or a street sign or, you know, so it's not really, I think the idea of art in general is a, is, is a good thing. So I think that it being here, it brings more culture and it's like, it's totally what the city needs. Everybody's really fighting to get this energy back, you know, and I think the tunnels had that energy when you drove through it, you know, your heart beat a little different. And I think that's kind of what we're trying to do again, you know, is make that come back alive, you know. I'm just excited that everybody's out here doing their thing, you know, like, it's definitely, when you drive by now and it's not even finished, it already makes the city look a lot cooler, and I think that when it's fully, fully done, it's gonna be similar to the tunnels. So this is our time on this earth, and it's kind of our way of expressing ourselves. I think most cultures have that, you know, like the Egyptians, you know, hieroglyphics, and. You know, even if you, you know, if you go as far back as it goes to like, I think even the Indians expressing themselves. And I think that our urban culture and our concrete society that we're in, you know, this is our way of, of, of doing it for everyone instead of just for ourselves or someone, art pieces for someone's home. Everything goes in cycles like music and everything else. And I think that it's gotten to a point where, um, you know, West Village and all these other high-end things all come together, you know, and like, People have gone that route, and I think it's time to get it right back down to the roof. It's one day out of the blue, I, I saw a call for artists for a mural competition here in Deep Ellum that uh, Frank had put out. So I answered the call and was selected to do one of the murals. And from that, it's just kind of snowballed to where every time Frank calls, I'll, I'll be here to do a mural. You know, everybody comes from different backgrounds, that, you know, um, but everybody's kind of has done everything they can to help each other on this project. So it's kind of unbelievable how everybody just come together to do this and to help one another and support one another. I am lost like you want me to be. I am You know, it is a labor of love. Whenever I'm creating, I, I kind of get lost in that, and it's really therapeutic because it feels good. I, you spend hours, and I mean, I've spent 100 plus hours in 100 degree heat, and it's been joyful, to be honest. Uh, even, you know, if I'm sopping wet with sweat and, and kind of being beaten down by the heat, I still truly enjoy it. I chose the colors basically because I wanted something to really pop off of that wall. The orange itself is going to lend itself to glow at sunset, so it's real eye-catching, and that's that's what I was looking for whenever I chose orange on, on top of the blue. Deep Ellum now is kind of in a rebirth, and it's appropriate that we're doing these murals here where the old tunnel was. I mean, whenever they destroyed the tunnel, it was kind of a closing of a chapter. And this is kind of a rebirth and kind of an opening of a new chapter where the music and art is going to play an even larger role in what Deep Ellum's known for. Yeah, that was pretty intense just getting it ready. Hopefully, it'll hold up for a while. I think a lot of the style comes from graffiti, like the technique of putting down the colors and coming in with the black outline and then doing the highlights. That whole process is really similar to painting letters in kind of a street art graffiti piece. I've 
definitely looked at some Asian reference. And then a lot of uh, tattoo art. I have a lot of friends that are tattoo artists. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. I just enjoy it. I mean, I'm happy if I can just keep doing what I'm doing now and just being able to do it on my own terms. Having a legacy of your artwork living beyond you. That would be really making it. My whole idea of the whole thing was the history of Deep Ellum and you know the the jazz history. It has such a you know, I mean Robert Johnson, Bessie Smith, uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson. So it. To me, I wanted to say something about that history of Deep Ellum, the music, but I didn't, this is just a less, it's not literal, it's animals playing. So, you know, it just kind of changed and grew. I have lived around this neighborhood for so long and it, it, I love it. And it's, you know, it's in a cycle all the time and I just, I love the neighborhood, I love the history, and the music that comes out of it really is, I believe in it. You're walking around the streets, it's history around you, it's special. If it was gone, there wouldn't be another place, but like that in Dallas anywhere. This part of Dallas is, that's all there is. I mean, if we get rid of this, it's, it's over. I've been practicing painting since basically I could hold a paintbrush. That's cool. So you like it? I do. I've been studying sharks in second grade and uh, have a slight obsession with them, but I love them to death. Yeah? Literally. <laughs> well, I guess not so literally. <laughs> Have you seen anyone kind of um, taking their pictures in front of this and kind of coming up and playing with the art? I have. Yeah. I had a little girl come up to me earlier whenever I was signing my signature. And she goes, did you paint this? All nice and cute and wide-eyed. And I was like, yes, ma'am, I did. I also did the other one. She goes, that's really cool. <laughs> and I've never, ever, ever had a little girl just kind of look at me with such wonderment and such amazement. And I was like, you should pick up a paintbrush and start drawing. Hello. I love inspiring art in others. I hope it inspires them to come to develop more because we are a lovely community down here. And really, I, I think, if anything, I'm hoping somebody, first glance at either one of my murals, the first thought will be, that's badass. No matter who you are. <laughs> uh, this project started out with a huge snag, that being the walls were, appeared to be really in great shape and they were not at all. We spent about a week water blasting and chipping paint and priming and doing a lot of prep work. And really prep work is the most difficult part of any project. It's by far the least glamorous and the most important. I like having at least one day doing prep work on a wall just to get to know the wall on the surface. I don't know, it's, it's almost spiritual or something, you know, you just gotta get to know it and feel it and notice nuances about it and that type of thing and figure out how you're gonna work whatever problems there might be into your overall creation. I enjoy the process of getting out there and doing it and the fresh air, the sunshine, the sound of the traffic. The sound of the traffic's almost like the ocean in a sense, so, you know, it just ebbs and it flows and it kind of puts you in a zone and, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I thought RoboCop would be fun to do because he's opposite the traveling man robot. So it's like, this robot was here before that robot. <laughs> um, Bonnie and Clyde, they, they met just up the street about five blocks from here and they spent a lot of time hanging out in Deep Ellum and 
hiding out and depel them. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much a no-brainer to throw them in there. I, I basically have three rules. And those being, uh, you know, for any public art project, and that's no hate, no violence, and no obvious sex, you know? <laughs> I don't have a problem with the suggestive, but you know, if it's just blatant, out and out, point, point, no, it's not gonna happen, you know? So, that's pretty much it. Those are my guidelines, and uh, the artists came up with their own ideas. And then it was like, okay, well, you guys all know each other, and now I want you to get to know each other a little bit better and figure out how to take your piece and blend it into the next piece and take some of your work. Don't be afraid to go into each other's spaces a little bit or carry each other's ideas over into each other's work to create more of a, you know, a single piece. I'm in great company when it comes down to these artists. Every single one of them, you know, humble me in, in their own right because um, it's almost like a mutual admiration society. Everybody gets off on each other and is blown away by each other's talent. So. Some things you can't buy. There's a certain passion and love for what everybody's doing right now. Um, I believe every artist involved with this project has gone over budget on materials and they been paying for materials out of their own pocket. And hopefully a lot of the artists will get recognition and their names will get a little bit bigger and uh, you know they get some kind of publicity or rec you know it'll help their career where they can feel comfortable in bumping up their prices I can finally breathe like the air has been clean for the first time in a really long time and couldn't you see it's something I need to be looked at like a beautiful shrine it's nothing to say you want to come home cause you're here but we're all still dying alone we're alone yeah 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 I can see clear for my that live here in the lofts coming over and tell us how much they appreciate us painting something on the wall and kind of getting getting rid of the kind of boring gray walls. Try can you keep your feet on the ground? There's no one but you to settle you down. We nurture a baby in the depths of our Depel will always be the place that is, you know, the artist type, the creative type is going to find something meaningful. And it's artists and musicians and poets and you know, writers and filmmakers and, you know, it, it really is. I'm glad that we've been able to hold on to that because they're artists. I mean, it's, you know, everybody has a message that's beautiful.
Yes, it does. B. Bellum definitely uh, enjoys its own uniqueness. Wow, that's so cool. Look at that. Give me one hug. Oh, oh, oh. 